Hi, this is David Fine from Keys Mods. This is a Wacky Worms video, and today we're gonna to talk about one of the most spectacular moths in Florida. It's the scarlet-bodied wasp moth, Cosmosoma myradora. It beautiful day flying wasp moth. Check this video out. I'll never forget the first time I saw a scarlet-bodied wasp moth. I mean, it's really unlike anything that we have. You can't mistake it with any other species that we have in Florida. It's a day-flying moth. It, it kind of behaves like a wasp, but there's no wasp that like has this bright, bright, glowing red abdomen. It's, it's really cool. Check this bug out. The moth is about an inch and a half wingspan, and it's got thick black venation, the thick black border around the wings, but most of the wings are transparent. They have no scales on them, so you can see right through them, which is one of the things that it's indicative of wasp moth species, many of them anyway. The body of this creature is really where it gets its name from. It has this beautiful red scaling all over the body, dorsally and ventrally, and all the legs are covered with red scales, and it's absolutely stunning red color which you don't see very often in the insect world. Uh, the tip of the abdomen's got these deep iridescent blue scaling on top of it with, and there's like a little line that goes up the abdomen of iridescent blue scaling. And the head is iridescent blue uh, scales all over it. Antennae are black with these white tips. It's just a spectacular moth, cover to cover, start to finish. The range of this moth, it lives in almost the entire state of Florida, coastal Georgia, and then coastal Louisiana, Alabama, and Texas. And I think it's been recorded in the Caribbean a couple times, but not confirmed. Larval host plants include two vines in the climbing hemp, Florida Keys hemp, uh, these two vines in the Asteraceae family. I've reared this moth several times on climbing hemp vine. That's Mycenaea cordifolia. But they also eat the, the Florida Keys hemp vine. It's Mycenaea scandens. The female will lay these little white round eggs singly on the leaves or stems of the host plant. And within a few days, the caterpillars hatch and they're little tiny white caterpillars with little hairs on them. And the whole caterpillar life is about seven to 10 days. And the caterpillars, as they go through their instars and molt, uh, they stay, they have white, whitish cream colored hairs with little black tips on them. And uh, they eat the leaves and stems of the host plant. The, the leaves of the plant are kind of like, um, they're almost like succulent. They're very watery. In fact, the plant lives in the water. If you go down by canal banks, the best place to find uh, the climbing hemp vine is on the banks of canals. They love, love like the swampy, wet areas where there's lots of water and the plant thrives in that environment. And the leaves are, uh, are, are succulent. They, they hold water, a lot of water. When you're taking care of the caterpillars and the caterpillars are chewing through the plant and the leaves, it's actually very messy because of how wet the plant is. So you gotta make sure you keep your container clean and dry if you're raising these moth caterpillars because when they poop, there's a lot of moisture in the container because of the plant. After 10 or 11 days, the caterpillar finally makes its cocoon. And the really cool thing is that the moth makes its cocoon using its own hair so they actually somehow shed. I, i've never actually seen them do this i'd love to see how they do it but they shed the their skin and their final molt of the cocoon and they use the hairs that are on are they called setae that are on the on the caterpillar skin and those hairs cover the the chrysalis of the moth and like this really like this little dome shaped thing of hairy and that's i guess that protects it from parasitizing uh, wasps and flies and that sort of thing. A week or two later, the moth chrysalis starts to turn bright red and you can see the moth is gonna emerge any moment. Males and females look virtually identical. 
Uh, the only way you can really tell them apart, the, the female's abdomen is a little larger, but it's really difficult to tell them apart that way. Now, if you flip them upside down, you can see on the male, on the right between the where the thorax and the abdomen connect, there are these little two cream colored patches. And those are actually andraconial patches where during mating rituals, the the male will flare those these these little feathery like organs out and that has like a perfume and they actually spray the female with this perfume that comes out of those organs and the female i don't know she likes that i guess I, I, <laughs> so that stimulates her to say yes and then they mate and then the whole process starts over but you can't really tell the females and males apart in the field very difficult they are a day flying species i've seen them at a number of different uh, uh, nectar sources, including Biden's Alba, uh, Shepherd's Needle. I've seen them on Sparkleberry in Central Florida. I've seen them nectaring on their larval host plant, the climbing hemp vine. They use a number of flowers as adult nectar sources, and the males of this species actually go to certain types of flowers that produce alkaline-based uh, nectar, and they use these this chemical that they get from certain types of flowers to produce the, the the perfume that they spray on the female. So that's, it's a whole thing. It's, it's really cool. A lot of moths and butterfly species do this, and that's why certain flowers attract certain types of butterflies and moths because of the chemicals that the flowers produce. So very, very interesting. I've caught them in bait traps. So I've hung bait traps before with rotting fruit like bananas and apples, and have they've wound up in the trap several times uh, they come to rotting fruit, apparently, as well. And I've you get them from time to time at artificial lights at night. Uh, I've got found them in you know my my light trap buckets. I found them at mercury vapor lights uh, at night when moth collecting in Central and South Florida. This wasp moth type of uh, Arctea tiger moth uh, group. It's actually a very large family in Central and South America, and there's there's a, a very huge diversity of different species of uh, tiger moths that are in this wasp moth family. Uh, they're very, very, very diverse. Every color you can imagine in South and Central America. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of them up this way, but the scarlet body wasp moth is one that we have and we love to show them off. So uh, guys, I hope you liked the video on the scarlet body wasp moth. It's a, it's a common moth in Florida. They live in multiple habitats. Uh, I've seen them in pine barrens. I've seen them in oak hammocks. I've seen them in swamps. I've seen them on canal banks. They're not usually seen. You don't see many of them, but they are around. And so it's a cool moth to have. Uh, hope you can garden for them too. So if you put the climbing hemp vine in your garden, not only will you attract lots of butterflies and moths, with the, because many butterflies and moths use it, uh, this plant as a nectar source, but you, you might get the scarlet body wasp moth as well. And so you can attract them right to your garden if you live in the state of Florida. Uh, but if you don't live in Florida, you're just gonna have to come down and get them. So hope you like the video guys. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we got plenty more videos on the butterflies and moths of South Florida. Uh, Till next time, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida and find us some scarlet bodied wasp moths. Take care.